I turn these dust almost to cobble You see a couple bands, I'll come in like Nirvana Blow a couple grand, make it back to a karma Fan of the drama, cause now I got them sweating over eating like I put them in a sauna, whoa Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Talalipop and yes, I bought another new bike. This channel is just going to be new bike days from now on. Just every video is going to be a new bike reveal. Another day, another new bike. <laughs> and this is my brand new, well, actually it's not that new anymore, but I just have not been able to ride it because of so many other projects that I've been busy with working on and other YouTube videos and things like that. But nonetheless, I absolutely love this bike. I really am excited to start test riding it and riding it on some sick trails and getting my skills up in mountain biking and all that. Um, but this one is a 2021 Trek Fuel EX 9.7, the least expensive carbon fiber Fuel EX model that you can actually purchase from Trek. Now this bike has since been updated to the 2022 model that has a different drivetrain and some different parts on it but this one is still a great bike and in this video we're essentially going to cover all of the specs on this bike i'll tell you uh basically why i chose this bike over any other trek bike or any other trek fuel ex specifically and why i think this one is a great value and basically just kind of show you some nice shots of the bike so you can see it on camera and kind of see what it looks like and get a better feel for the bike if you are considering buying one for yourself and we'll do a short little test ride at the end of the video as well uh, i'm gonna save a full-on trail ride for another video since that'll take a longer time but yeah, let me show you some nice shots of the bike right now and we'll talk about my story of kind of why I chose this one So this one is like I mentioned the least expensive fuel EX uh, that you can buy that is full carbon fiber And it's actually the least expensive carbon fiber full suspension bike that you can buy from Trek So it is a pretty good uh, value in my opinion if you just want the fuel EX carbon frame because this carbon frame is the same one that's on the 9.8, the 9.9, the highest end, $10,000, $13,000 bikes, whatever. And you're getting the same one here for only $4,200, which was the original retail price when I was getting this bike, but now it has since increased a little bit. But yeah, believe it or not, I was actually deciding between this bike and the Fuel X5, because both of those are the uh, most entry-level Fuel X models in their respective uh, frame sets. So the Fuel X5 is the the cheapest way to get an aluminum fuel EX and this is the cheapest way to get a carbon fuel EX. I personally like getting a lower spec bike and just upgrading parts myself because I work at a bike shop, I can find bike parts secondhand and fix them up and all that. So I'm not really too worried about the the cost savings and in, in getting a higher end bike. So I didn't want to go with the 9.8 and spend that extra money because it was a little bit too much money for me. And I was thinking about the Fuel X5, however, that bike is just so popular that it's constantly out of stock. So I was not able to get one. And getting a carbon fiber full suspension bike from Trek is something I've really wanted to try out. I do want to ride some more full suspension bikes that are aluminum even before uh you know giving my full review on this one since I'm not as confident in my ability to discern carbon versus aluminum on a trail yeah but with that out of the way let's get into this bike and start off with the frame specs okay so this is the fuliex carbon fiber frame and just take a look at it it is absolutely gorgeous the straight shot down tube all of the tubing and forming you can see and beautiful carbon fiber work on this one you can actually see the carbon fiber weave in the sunlight uh on the matte part of this bike and then the, you have the gloss on the bottom there the gloss black and this beautiful silver brushed aluminum look for the trek logo as well as the fuel ex logo on the top for specs on this frame we got uh boost 110 on the front boost 148 in the rear uh, for hub spacing which is great for mountain biking it is an oclv mountain carbon frame uh, for the front triangle and the rear triangle it has a magnesium rocker link in the middle so that's not carbon fiber but everything else is it's got of course a tapered head tube in the front very nice bulky head tube right there has the knock block feature that trek uses to prevent the fork from hitting the side of the frame right there and you can also see it has uh the down tube guard for the fork and kind of like a shuttle armor type of thing so that's nice to see right there it also has another rubberized protector near the bottom of the down tube right here to prevent any rocks and anything from hitting up and damaging the carbon on the frame and then it has a similar story with the chain stay in the rear uh, just preventing some chain noise and chain damage to the frame the bike does have iscg mounts as well for if you want to add a chain guide bash guard stuff like that and probably one of the coolest things about this frame is of course the bond trigger bits uh, internal storage that we have right here so you can actually take out the bottle cage and uh, you can see inside that there is internal frame storage and there's a little bit of a pocket here and you can put whatever you want in there like cereal or cliff bars or some ravioli or something like that yeah but that's basically it for the frame mine is in a size medium 
Uh, I'm around 5'7 or 5'8 inches in height, and that's basically the size I get for all my mountain bikes. Okay, now let's talk about the suspension. So we have a Fox Rhythm 36 in the front. Uh, that's pretty much the lowest Fox 36 that you can get. You, you can't even buy this one secondhand. You can only get it when it's stock on a bike like this. So not the highest in there, but it's kind of expected for the 9.7, the least expensive carbon model here. So I'm not too too bothered by that. But it does have 36 millimeter stanchions, which is great to see. Uh, definitely a nice strong fork there. Has 140 millimeters of travel, so perfect in the trail range right there. And it does have a nice spot here on the left side of the fork to put air inside of it. And on the right side, you just have a very basic compression damper. It's basically a lockout. You don't even have any clicks or anything. You just kind of turn it, kind of infinite adjust to where you want to put it. And then it also has rebound adjust on the bottom and a 15 millimeter uh, Cabot axle. So overall, a nice suspension fork. Nothing to write home about, but it's cool to have a 36 on this bike. Moving on to the rear shock, we have a Fox Performance Float Evol. This one has a three position uh, damper, which is a reactive damper, which is essentially uh, Trek's own tuning. And for for those of you who do not know much about reactive, essentially the idea is when the shock is being compressed slowly, it will be firmer and stiffer. So essentially when you're riding in areas that do not have a lot of bumps, it'll be more efficient. But when it is being compressed fast, it really opens up to absorb those larger hits while still being efficient on these smaller hits. So essentially it should make the uh, shock a lot better, but I have heard a lot of mixed reviews about it. So I'm interested to see how I personally think it feels. But yeah, this one has 130 millimeters of travel. So 140 up front, 130 in the rear, perfect for an all mountain trail bike so i'm really happy with those figures for sure all right getting kind of windy but next let's talk about the wheels on this bike so starting with the rims this bike has a uh, bond trigger line comp 30 aluminum rims these are tubeless ready but they're nothing that special uh they'll work fine for this bike but getting some carbon rims would really make this bike really cool and shine out more and then for the tires we have the bond trigger xr4 team issue tires which are also tubeless ready so full tubeless setup on this bike it comes with sealant installed so that is great and basically a necessity in, for mountain biking these days uh, but this one has a 2.6 inch wide tire in the front and a 2.4 in the rear you can see that with these values on the tires so you have a faster rolling less aggressive tire in the rear and a wider more aggressive tire in the front to give you a, a nice balance of both worlds both of these tires are 120 tpi so they're really great tires i've heard a lot of good uh, reviews about the xr4 so i'm happy with these for sure uh, and then real quick for the hubs, these are just Bontrager hubs right here. But the rear of the bike does have a Rapid Drive 54 tooth hub. So it does not have 108 points of engagement like the uh, Fuel X 9.8 and above. But 54 is still great and I have bought uh, some upgrade kits to upgrade that to a 108. Alright, but next let's move on to this sick drivetrain. Kind of, not really, but it's still cool. It, it's a mainly SRAM and X-Eagle drivetrain, so nothing to write home about once again. Uh, but we do have some mixed parts here and there. So starting with the shifter, we have a SRAM NX Eagle shifter, which is not that special, but it is definitely better than the SX shifter. So I'm happy about that. Would have preferred a GX, but at this price point, it's fine. Um, I'll probably upgrade that in the future. But then we move down here to a Truvative Descendant crank set in the front. On the website, it's listed as a SRAM X1 Eagle. And then this one does have a dub bottom bracket and a 32 uh, steel chain ring. So fine crank set there, 175 millimeter length uh, on that one. And then we have a SRAM NX Eagle chain, of course, moving us back to the highlight of this drivetrain, which is, of course, the derailleur. Trek loves specking a higher end derailleur, so you think that you're getting a better drivetrain than you are, but I won't complain because I am getting a better part on this drivetrain, which is the GX Eagle rear derailleur. And this derailleur is perfect. I love this one. It's super durable, always works well. But then we move on to the cassette, which is also a SRAM NX Eagle. You can see fully black cassette. So no 52 tooth on this one, no mega tooth cog, which is fine for me. I don't really care about that too much, but it is a little bit of a heavier cassette. And then let's cover the brakes before we get into the finishing components. So these are Shimano four piston hydraulic disc brakes. These are the MT4100 levers, so a little bit higher end than the MT200s, thank god I don't have those on this bike. Um, but nothing too special, doesn't have the short reach lever on here. But I think these brakes will work fine, at least they're four pistons, so you can see the calipers here. Um, kind of unbranded, I mean they have the Shimano logo, but not uh, associated with uh, Dior spec or XT or anything like that. They're just kind of their own thing here, but they're the MT420 calipers. And you know, I'm sure they'll work fine. These rotors are absolutely massive. These are the 203 millimeter 
rotor in the front at least and then 180 millimeter in the rear which is perfect that's going to provide some great stopping power for this bike so i'm not going to be too worried about those and then the finishing components as promised we have a bontrager line dropper right here this one has 150 millimeters of travel which is great for me uh, and for my height at least it has a 31.6 millimeter diameter which is okay i know we're seeing some wider 34.9 millimeter droppers now on the top fuel and the slash and i think the new fuel ex has that as well now but this is still fine. I'm fine with this one for sure. And then moving up, we have the Bontrager Arvada seat that is on every single Trek bike in existence. Uh, <laughs> but this one has the hollow chromoly rails on it, so it's a little bit lighter in weight. And then moving towards the cockpit, we have a nice little stem here, which is the Bontrager line stem. It has a 35 millimeter clamp and it is 50 millimeters long, which is uh, I'll see how that feels on the trail. Maybe a little bit shorter would be cool, but that looks nice. But then we have Okay, well this bike <laughs> isn't supposed to come with this carbon fiber handlebar. I just put this on. Super cool race face next arc uh, handlebar. It has a 20 millimeter rise on this one. Uh, five degree up, eight degree back, as you can tell. This one is a carbon fiber handlebar, so I think it just complements this bike a lot because it's carbon fiber like the bike is. It has like black and silver components in it to match the bike, so I think that's honestly just perfect for this one. So that's why I threw it on right away. But I will mention that the original handlebar on this bike was a Bontrager line alloy handlebar, and I have this one right here so you can kind of compare. This one does have a larger uh, 27 and a half millimeter rise. Uh, the next R handlebar from Race Face is 800 millimeters, whereas the uh, Bontrager line one is 780 millimeters. So a little bit wider on the Race Face one, but you can always cut that down if you wish. But yeah, that is basically it for the spec overview on this bike. I hope you enjoyed that and saw some nice shots of it and I hope that was what you were looking for. But now let's basically go out and give this bike a nice little test ride. I just want to show off the bike and how it looks when someone's on it, riding it and things like that just to kind of complete this overview and initial reveal video on this bike. All right, riding the Fuel EX 9.7. Let's go over here. Woo. Okay, wow. <laughs> this is fun. Got a bit of cat cable rattle from all these zip ties I'm trying to put on here. This bike feels pretty fast. Yeah, I'm going uphill now and it's a breeze. Maybe I should go down those sand dunes. <laughs> Alright, just gonna turn around and go down. So I'm not sure what that noise is, but I'll figure it out. Oh, this bike feels super fun. Yeah, I mean, this is essentially a gravel pad, but I can kind of get a feel for this bike's attitude. And surprisingly, you know, it's not like a cross-country bike or anything, but it does feel like it wants to go fast. And it still feels very aggressive, planted, just like a mean bike. climb up there. I'll try to ride down. There's a fairly steep little segment right there that'll kind of test out the suspension a little bit. All right, let's get on and do this. All right, didn't go too fast there. It's pretty easy for the Felix to do that. Let's go over here. Whew. Bit of a narrow section. Let's see how it does. Okay, taking it slow. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Getting super narrow now. There's a very vertical drop here. Ah, whatever, I'll try. Woo! <laughs> oh man, that was a little steep, but this bike just feels like it's taking everything with ease, so, you know, once again, if you guys don't follow my channel, I'm used to riding Trek Marlins and stuff, so. <laughs> Bit of a surprise to me out here. Yeah, that was a fun little test ride. Hope you enjoyed that a little bit. I know it wasn't really much of anything. I thought we got an actual trail ride in the future. This is mainly just like a kind of introduction to this bike. 
But that is it for this video, everyone. Thank you so much for watching another video of another new bike day. I'm sure you guys are very sick of these at this point, so I'm very sorry if they're getting annoying. Uh, I'll try to ride some of these bikes. I say, I'll say I'll try. I am trying, but I'm not doing that well. I'm not really succeeding, but I do want to try riding these bikes a little bit more. I have a lot of other videos I got to make still, but hopefully you'll see some trail riding bikes on this one in the future, as well as all the other bikes that I've bought. But besides that, thank you all so much for watching and remember to keep biking. <laughs>